Good evening, folks. Hope you're all keeping well. Um, not too bad of a day. We had two winners, the first and the last. We went out the same way we came in anyway. That's the main thing. Obviously, the first one drifted out to close to even money, just shading a touch odds on. And um, a lovely 8-1 winner with best on stage. We were very unlucky with the likes of Keats, San Martino. Um, the nap of the day didn't run any sort of race at all. Uh, the rest were, I suppose, average enough source in behind. But like I said, I'm not necessarily a, a flat tipster. But we gave it a go. And for the day, we came out with a profit anyway. So that's as good of a, of a profit any day of the week anyway. But... Um, Back with the National Hunt card now tomorrow. few short prices here. Um, it's more so, I suppose, picking out as many winners as I possibly can um, than anything else with this. But, yeah, I think I think we're, we've, we're on a fairly good day now tomorrow. So, hopefully, with the help of God, I know there's a few short prices in here, but we should be able to turn some nice bit of money anyway. Uh, first race the two ten. We're gonna go with you. Raise me up at eleven to eight. Really and truly, this horse is the class act of the race. Um, it's more of a I suppose interest form more so than anything else. The breeding is definitely well worth considering. It's a lovely sort. It goes well fresh, as you could see last year in its seasonal debut in Galway. And I know it was a bumper race, but it was a fairly good bumper all the same. It its last run was third in the Ladbrokes hurdle. Uh, obviously behind those days are gone. Who not only won in style that day, but ran very credibly in Cheltenham. I think it was only two months later, but yeah, it looks definitely the class act of the race. There's nothing in here really too, I suppose, exciting to put it, I suppose, in respectable terms. But um, yeah, I think at 11 to 8, it's a very nice price. I was sort of half expecting it to be closer to even money, maybe a touch odds on. But um, yeah, I definitely think come race time, it shouldn't be 11 to 8. It goes in all sor sorts of ground. It was... The day it won in Galway in the bumper, it was close to bottomless ground. It was the day of the Galway hurdle, if I'm not mistaken, because I think I had Sharjah at 16 to 1 in the Galway hurdle that day myself. So I think I, I can rem remember it fairly clearly. I was on You Raised Me Up and Sharjah in a double, so it was a very nice, very nice payday. But um, I think this horse is going to do the very same thing for me now tomorrow. Um. It definitely looks to be the class act. Mark Walsh on board for the Brazzles Brazil team. Uh yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't really be troubled at the end of the day and should make the first day or the first race off to be a fairly easy winner. Uh second race of the day, the nap of the day. I cannot go without uh napping up Malone Road at one to two. I personally think that the price is very good. I was expecting it to be more close to one to four, one to five odds on. I definitely think come race time it will. Um, it's often referred to the I suppose the bridesmaid of the the ownership team, obviously with Envoy Len, um, ahead of it. But it's undefeated and it's a very classy looking sort. I definitely think come the time at Cheltenham, it's going to be, if not, if it doesn't win, it's definitely going to be up there at the very top but um say a novice hurdle company but yeah it shouldn't be beaten here today it definitely and it, i suppose i wanted to look at if you have a 10 euro stake you'll get 15 back i know it's not great but at the same time a winner is better than a loser at the end of the day and if you're looking for a winner in that race malone road is almost as close to a certainty as you can possibly get um now the 320 premium package at four to one this one here was a winner at my local pint to pint in stolen county galway um it stayed three miles that day it was a very impressive winner uh its last run was very impressive and worse than ground obviously with the rain forecast you've seen it there today in listole 
and is still teaming down, is still probably going to be teaming down for the rest of the night, it's going to soften the ground up. And I definitely think when it comes to race time tomorrow, it should be good to yield and at very best, if not maybe even coming close to, I suppose, soft. Uh, that should really play into this premium package's hands. And um, yeah, I it's it's a tough race to call, but... I think 4-1 to one is a great, great price, and if you're looking for a winner, it's definitely one of the more obvious candidates. Uh, 3.35, the next best of the day, we're going to go in Western Victory at 5-4. to four. I personally do not know why this horse is such a big price. I was expecting it to see it close to 1-2, to 1-3 to three odds on. I know Papong is a sort of a, an unexposed type in behind, but... Really and truly, it will need to be a very much, very much a class act to beat this Western victory here today. Western victory, uh, looking down through the field, it's beaten most of them, uh, for, by a considerable distance, and um, I, I, I can honestly say that this Western victory, if it, if it comes in with the same form, obviously it's going to be extremely hard to beat, um. It's coming in from the Queely yard, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's Queely's have him. Uh, it should set off at the front. It should really dictate the pace. Maybe Papong might dictate the pace as well, but it's hard to know. Um, I'd expect this horse to just cruise up alongside Papong if Papong decides to make the make the running, and it should go on to be a very very easy contender. It's a very sound jumper. It should. It should really get get home safe and sound, and um, yeah, five to four is a massive price in my personal opinion. Uh, four thirty and each way shout here. We're going to go with Raven Hill for the care the Kerry National. Um, look at I'm really putting this down to it goes well fresh. Uh, all you have to do is look at the look at the win it had in Cheltenham. It was possibly, um, possibly one of the most impressive winners in the Cheltenham Festival. I know the race itself. It wasn't a really the best race in terms of quality that carefully selected. Doesn't really, I suppose, scream and shout to be a a real quality sort. But this Raven Hill definitely does, in my personal opinion anyway. Uh, I've liked seeing it go around. It seems to be a sound enough jumper looking at the, the Cheltenham run again. I was looking at, looking at it all day today and yesterday. Um, it's gone from twelve to one into seven to one. I definitely think it's going to go shorter. Uh, I can really see it going off and maybe, considering the favorite is six to one, I can see it maybe going off to in around sixes as well, if not maybe fives and sharing or maybe even taking over the favorites tag. Um, yeah, it's definitely an each way price. Uh, so I would advise betting each way, obviously for the Kerry National, but. It's an each way shout that has a very, very good chance and a very sporting chance. And with, I can't remember who is on board, but I know it's a seven pound claimer. It's definitely one of the best weighted horses in the field. And it should really take some stopping. Obviously, an e another each way shout would po probably be, I suppose, Peregrine Run at 14 to 1. We didn't see its best um, there on Sunday. When it fell at the first at four to seven on, it's generally a sounder jump, sounder jumper than that, and it's generally a sounder horse than that as well. Um, it's just its win rate is just shy of fifty percent, so that has to take into consideration as well. But really and truly, when you're looking at form, I really can't look past this Raven Hill at seven to one. I think it's a great, great price, and it should be there thereabouts in the finish. Now the five oh five, we're gonna go with another each way shout, but not I suppose at as good a price is Pilbara at five to one. Uh it was completely out of source since the start of the resumption. I know it's one two, but ever since the second win it's just been completely out of sorts. Completely climbed up in the handicap. It's dropped down again to a fairly nice mark. Uh it doesn't seem to be too I suppose Two testing of a race, really, at the end of the day. And uh, if it resumes in form and if it's back on track, it should really be hard to beat. But the fact that it's five to one, I would suggest an each way bet. Now, finally, the 540. 
Uh, we're going to go with Bohemian Birch at 3-1. to one. Really and truly, this possibly would be a no bet uh, race for me. There's nothing really going in here in terms of form in the book. Anything that has run hasn't really, I suppose, screamed and shouted, I suppose, potential superstar. I know there's one in here from Terence O'Brien Yard, Mallers Dollar. It looks to be progressing fairly well, but if this was it Bohemian Birch um comes in boosting the same, I suppose, credentials that it's it's bred to be, it shouldn't really be hard to beat. Patrick Mullins, I suppose, hasn't really stood up to my expectation since I started mentioning him in the in the videos, but I still and I will always still hold him in high regard as one of the best amateurs in the game at the minute. Um and possibly one of the best amateurs Ireland has seen in a, in quite some time. But yeah, Willie likes to have a few bumper winners, as you all know. Patrick likes to be on them. Uh look at three to one. You normally don't see Willie Mullins' horses in bumpers at three to one. So it's definitely look at it definitely looks like one of the more value horses in the race. But if I was if I was to take it on I'd say clear at the top of the market and I would have a cheeky each way at uh, Mount Callum for the Brian McMahon yard at 33 to 1. Um, they're a shrewd enough operation up around County Clare, um, just on the border between Clare and Galway. But yeah, it looks to be, I suppose, an interesting sort, more so than anything else. It'll be interesting to see how well it does in, 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 in its first bumper. And um, yeah... 33 to 1 definitely looks to be overpriced, but in terms of a winner, I definitely don't think that this uh, Bohemian Birch should be beaten. But look, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, make sure to keep liking, sharing, subscribing. I'll be doing an article for the World of Sport website uh, after this video, video goes on air or goes up on YouTube, whatever way you like to call it. But um, if you haven't subscribed there, I'll leave a link in the in the description below for the website and uh it's free to it's free to sign up and it's free to register and uh there's plenty of winners coming off that page over the last couple of weeks two or three weeks whatever it is whatever it has been but um i'm going to leave it there thanks very much make sure to keep liking sharing subscribing